It was great to have the two-night event with WrestleMania, Saturday and Sunday. And now it sounds like SmackDown and Raw might be coming back. One, from what you know, Big Show, is that what's happening? And and is that important for people to have entertainment, uh, something to watch while we're all kind of going through this? Well, I think any way of escaping is good. You know, in any way people can find escaping, whether it's in a book, whether it's in... Um, you know, your favorite, you know, uh, program on TV or favorite streaming service or, you know, breaking out your favorite board game at home, whatever you can do to stay engaged and stay, um, to be able to take your mind off everything that's going on. And, and, uh, as far as Raw and SmackDown, again, I'm not high enough on the important guy list to know what they're doing. So, uh, (laughs) you know, as we say a resume, that's above my pay grade right now. So, uh, but you know, my attitude, you know, if I, if, uh, if they need me, I'm always willing to help and, and do whatever I can to help. So you would go out there now, you would feel safe enough to. I absolutely, absolutely hundred percent. Our performance center, the way it's set up, the way it's being shot, the, the way that our company is taking this very seriously. And at the same time, still being able to provide, uh, some kind of escape for our fans to keep our fans engaged. I think it's, it's, it's a win-win for everyone. As much as I could force you to do anything, I'm making you talk about this, but you, you're a good friend and you just, <laughs> you did something very kind during a really yeah. tough time for a lot of people, for your friends. You said you were just doing landscaping for a buddy who can't really go outside right now. It's not really safe for them to go outside. And, you know, I, you know, I practice social distancing. I've been a giant for, you know, 35 years, I guess, 32 years. Um, I always practice social distancing. Anyway, nobody wants to get within six feet of me. You know, they're scared I'll step on their toes. But, you know, in this time of uncertainty and these stressful times, you know, there's stuff I try to help out friends. I mean, yeah, I can cut grass. I can, you know, move to tree debris out of the back of the yard. And, you know, and at least, you know, when that person who is, for whatever reason, they have to stay in their house, you know, they can look outside and at least the yard looks good. I mean, you know, that's, I, I mean, I'm doing that just to be a nice guy. Um, and they're a good friend. I'm not trying to, you know, get an award for a good human being or nothing. Um, yeah, you caught me. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> Tell me about the show, Big Show Number One, and what has this been like to be part of something that's probably new to you that you haven't really done in the past? I, I, <laughs> I am so blown away and so overwhelmingly, I'm just full of gratitude, man. I mean, um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of crazy things going on in the world right now. And um, for my little show that I've wanted to do for years to, to having some kind of a live comedy interaction to way back when The Rock did Saturday Night Live and Mick Foley and Triple H and Vince and I were on there. I've been driving Vince McMahon nuts since then to the point of where I think the guy sees me come down the hall. He ducks into the bathroom whether he has to go or not just to get away from me. Um, that Vince, I can do this. I was trying to get something on Raw, something on SmackDown, something on Superstars, anything. I need this kind of show. And then when the partnership came up with Netflix and WWE, luckily Squeaky Wheel gets the grease. I think uh, uh, I'm glad that WWE, um, they had enough faith in me to pull it off. And, you know, I got really lucky with my writers, uh, Josh Bissell and Jason Berger, who put together an incredible script and our writing staff and, and, I can't say thank you enough. I mean, I've got, if, if nothing ever happens any further from the show, if, if this is it, doesn't go any further, I've got three new daughters now that I love, love to death, and Juliet Donafield and, and Lily Brooks and Raylan Castor. I love those girls to death, you know, and, and, I, and I, Allison Munn, who plays my wife on the show, she's been absolutely fantastic. Um, if anything, I'm a winner just from having those people in my life now. And I'm humble and grateful for that. But the fact that people are able to, to see our show and understand uh, our comedy with it and like it and see that it's a show that the family loves each other. I'm I'm so proud. And and just, I have to pinch myself to see if it's real. I really do. Because it's, it's, you can hope and dream and wish. uh, And then to see it, you know, come to fruition and do as well as it's doing I owe that to the fans that tuned in and everybody that, that's watched it on Netflix. And thank you. You were obviously right that this was this was a show that needed to be made because it's so good. What has been said thank about you. what has been said about it? 
a big show. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Vince is funny. Vince is very direct. Um, when I wrapped uh, for the season in November, when we wrapped, um, I got a phone call and uh, how'd it go? And I said, I, I think we got a, I think we got a hit, boss. I think we've got a good one. I never had any doubt. <laughs> good job. And that's it. You know, <laughs> I'm glad you never had any doubts because I had a lot of doubts. I mean, I was terrified. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. Um, you know, his, uh, his unshakable confidence is, is inspiring. There you go. <laughs>